Dear students, today I am going to explain applications of UV visible spectroscopy. So let's start. UV visible spectroscopy has many applications, but it is preferred in quantitative analysis. UV visible spectroscopy alone does not give great information related to the structure and identity of compound. But when it is combined with IR, NMR and mass spectroscopy, it will give lots of information related to the structure and identity of compound. Now we'll go for applications of UV visible spectroscopy in quantitative analysis. The first application is spectrophotometric titration. Second is single component analysis and next application is multi component analysis. Spectrophotometric titrations. We all know about the regular titrations like acid base titration, redox titration, or precipitation titration. Now, what is the difference between these titrations and spectrophotometric? In regular titrations, the end point is detected by our eye and there are chances of human error. But in spectrophotometric titrations, the end point is determined by extrapolating the graph of absorbance against volume of titrant added so there are less chances of error in these titrations now we'll see these titrations in detail here in these titrations either titrant titrant or reaction product should absorb radiations that means titrant whose concentration is known generally it is present in burette Titrant whose concentration is unknown and generally in, it is in conical flask or the reaction product either of any any one of these three should absorb radiation and then we will go for we can go for spectrophotometric titrations. Here the absorbance of solution is used to determine end point. These titrations are based on Beer's law. Now we all know about Beer's law. Beer's law explains the relation between absorbance and concentration which is directly proportional. When concentration increases, absorbance will increase. The titration curve is the plot of absorbance versus volume of titrant added. The graph will be like this. Volume of titrant added on x-axis, absorbance on y-axis. And when we extrapolate the graph, we'll get end point. Now, advantages of these titrations. The first advantage is analysis is carried out at ppm level. That means milligram per liter level. And this amount is thousand times less than the sample analyzed in regular titration. Second, uh, second advantage is missing end point is not the problem here because we are already adding extra amount of titrant and then we are plotting the graph so missing endpoint is not the problem here first type of spectrophotometric titration is uh, if the titrant absorb the radiation but titrant and reaction product do not absorb radiation then the absorbance will decrease initially and then after reaching endpoint it will remain constant example is titration of ferric ion against edta that means assay of ferric ferric ion with edta in this procedure ferric is first titrated first reacted with salicylic acid which will provide which will produce ferric salicylate complex and this complex is a highly colored complex and that's why it will absorb radiation very strongly but when, so when we start titration against EDTA, the next more stable complex of ferric EDTA will produce and this new complex is colorless and that's why absorbance will initially decrease and it will remain constant after reaching end point. The graph is like this one. Initially the absorbance is decreased because ferric salicylate complex is going to break down. And after reaching end point, addition of EDTA is not going to affect the absorbance. And after extrapolating, we will get end point here. 
second type of titration is titration in which the titrant absorb radiation but titrant and reaction product do not absorb radiation in this case the absorbance remains constant at first but it increases after reaching end point the example here covered is uh, titration of brominating mixture against arsenic chloride arsenic chloride itself do not absorb radiation but uh, the brominating mixture absorb radiation so uh, as well as the reaction product of these two also do not absorb radiation in this case the absorbance remains constant initially but after consumption of total arsenic chloride all amount of arsenic chloride the conical flask will have extra brominating mixture and uh, due to this extra brominating mixture extra amount of brominating mixture absorbance will start increasing after reaching end point this will be the graph absorbance is initially constant but it increases after end point here is the end point next is if the reaction product absorb radiation but titrant and titrant do not absorb radiation then absorbance initially decreases but remains constant after reaching end point the example here is titration of copper sulfate against EGTA here uh, the reaction product absorb radiation but both EDT and copper sulfate do not absorb radiation and the graph is like this one when the product started produced forming the absorbance is increased but when total copper sulfate is consumed and there is no extra copper sulfate remaining addition of EDTA will not affect the amount of product and that's why absorbance remains constant after reaching end point here is the end point fourth type of titration is when titrant and titrant both absorb radiation but the reaction product do not absorb radiation then the absorbance decreases initially but it increases after reaching end point the example is titration of red dye against liquid bromine both are highly colored compound both absorb radiation but their reaction product do not absorb radiation so initially when addition of uh, liquid bromine is there to the red dye product start produced and that's why amount of red dye is reducing and that's why absorbance is decreased but when all the red dye is consumed all the product is produced end point is reached the extra amount of liquid bromine added in the conical flask will cause increase in the absorbance that means after reaching end point absorbance will start increasing the graph will be like this one initially absorbance decreases but after reaching end point absorbance start increasing here is the end point so these are four types of spectrophotometric titrations now we'll go for next application that is single component analysis if the sample has only one drug or only one analyte and the excipients and matrix component do not absorb at the lambda max of drug then by simply measuring the absorbance of drug it, its assay can be performed that means in such a case single component analysis is preferred now single component analysis can be carried out by various methods the first method is use of standard absorptivity value second is use of calibration graph method next is single or double point standardization method so we'll go for first one use of standard absorptivity value this procedure is adopted by official books like british pharmacopeia indian pharmacopeia for stable substance these substances have broad absorption bands which are unaffected by variations in instrumental parameters like slit width here specific absorbance or molar absorptivity are used in calculation of unknown concentration 
first we'll go for use of specific absorbers now here the formula used is capital a is equal to a 1% 1 cm bc where capital a is absorbance of sample solution a 1% 1 cm is value of specific absorbance which is given in the book official book b is the path length which is generally 1 cm for almost all spectrophotometers uv visible spectrophotometers and C is the concentration which we are going to calculate. When molar absorptivity value is used, the formula will be A is equal to epsilon BC. A is absorbance of sample, epsilon is the value of molar absorptivity, B is path length and C is the concentration which we are calculating. In both these methods, reference standard solution or reference standard substance is not required. This is very important. Now, second method, calibration graph method. In this method, reference standard substance is required. Four to six reference standard solutions uh, of different concentration are prepared covering the sample concentration range. That means four to six standard solutions should be prepared here. The absorbance of standard and sample solution is measured. Absorbance of standard solution is plotted against concentration. The graph will be like this one. Concentration on x-axis, absorbance on y-axis will get straight line because the relationship is linear here. Now, by using regression line equation, we can calculate unknown concentration. Now, regression line equation is y is equal to mx plus c. y is absorbance of sample, m is slope of calibration curve, x is concentration of sample and c is intercept of calibration curve. Now, this method is most accurate method. Now, we will go for next single and double point standardization. In these methods also, reference standard substance is required. Sample and standard solution should be prepared in same manner. The concentration of standard and uh, sample should be close. In single point standardization method, only one standard and one sample is prepared. That means only two solutions are prepared here. The formula used here is C test is equal to A test into C standard upon A standard where C standard and C test are concentration of standard and sample respectively. A standard and A test are absorbance of standard and sample respectively. In double point standardization method, two standard and one sample solution is prepared. The formula used here is somewhat complicated. C test is equal to A test minus A standard in first bracket A standard 1. In second bracket, C standard 1 minus C standard 2 plus C standard 1 in bracket A standard 1 minus A standard 2 upon A standard 1 minus A standard 2. Where C standard 1, C standard 2, C test are concentrations of standard 1, standard 2 and sample solution. And A standard 1, A standard 2 and A, uh, A test are absorbance of standard 1, standard 2 and sample solution respectively. So these are about the spectrophotometric titrations and single component analysis methods. Now multi-component analysis method I am going to cover in the next part of this video. I hope you got all these things. Thank you for watching my video.